Okay, we're back, and this time with the light meter. This is a Sekonic analog light meter. There are no batteries. You don't need to turn it on. You just need to take it out and put it in the light that you want to measure. Um, there is only one thing that you could possibly, actually there's two things you could lose. The first thing is in the back is stored something called the high slide. It's stored back here. You want to make sure that you always have it because you will sometimes need it. When you have a lot of light, if you're out in the middle, in the sun, in the middle of the day, uh, your light, there might be more light uh, than the light meter can handle. This filters the light so you can get an appropriate uh, reading. So make sure that that is back there. When you need it, you will put it in the top there. Uh, the other thing that I said that does come off this part here is where is what is going to filter the light and where the reading is going to be measured. The white bulb is what you use when you're measuring three-dimensional objects. There is also a, a flatter one that is used if you were doing flat objects, but most of the time we're photographing people or out in the world. We need the, the 360 or bulb there. Um, so the one thing we need to tell the light meter from the beginning is what is the sensitivity of your film. That here it is marked as ISO. Uh, you may know it as ASI or on the film box it might say EI. All of those refer to the sensitivity of the film. As I put my finger here, if I do this and move it around, I have lots of different options. We're going to put it at 200. All right, but whatever you will put it at, whatever you want to rate the film, whatever it says on your box. To do a light meter reading, you just take it, take the meter into where the light you need to measure, where your subject is, and you press this button. Right? And when we do that, we can see that this red dial comes up, needle comes up on the dial. Right there, it is saying that it's about 80 foot candles. If I was doing contrast ratios, that is all the information I would need, but I actually need to get an f-stop. Uh, one thing about this before we move on, this button can be pushed down when I do that as I move this around or uh, change the light. It responds uh, to whatever is happening to it instead of holding a reading. This we might use in lighting design when we're setting lights, but if we're just trying to get an f-stop, we want to make sure it's popped up. But if it is all the way down like that, just press and turn and it will pop back up. And when it's popped up like that, you do a reading and it will hold that reading for you. So there are the dials up to 80. Well, 80 foot candles is really not something that I can set on my lens. So what do I need to do? I need to match that number up with this triangle right here. And this will give me some useful information once I do that. So I line wherever my needle has gone, I line it up with those numbers that match up. And here it's just 80, so 80 is lined up with the triangle. <coughs> This uh, light meter it can be used for still photography or cinematography. When we use it for cinematography, we, photography, we come down to this red scale here, the cine scale, and we look at these red numbers that are frame rates. Right, 24 has a little line because 24 is going to be normal exposure, normal motion, normal speed. So if we're doing that, we just say 24 frames per second. That puts us about a third. Uh, close down from 2.8. All right, so on most cameras, most of the Bolex cameras that, uh, and most cameras that you have, you know, if it has a pretty fast lens, you'll be able to use that and you'll be able to shoot if it's, uh, but you know, it depends on the lens that you have. <clears throat> and again, but as I change that ASA, you can see that number is going to change. So if I have a slower ASA, or a faster if I was shooting 800, well, it's up at 5.6. So I'm gonna bring it down to 200. But again, ASA is drastically gonna change what f-stop you can shoot at. What's the appropriate f-stop? Um, 
in the situation that I wanted to use a different frame rate, if I was doing fast motion at 8 frames per second or slow motion at 64, I would read align the f-stop with that frame rate number. And that will give me the accurate f-stop. Remember, speed of the film and then how long it is being exposed are both going to affect the, the needs of the f-stop and how much light do we need to come in. In the situation where I had too much light, if this this needle came all the way up here and was kind of just kept going, sort of stuck, then I would put in the high side and I would take this out and put it in. All right. And in that situation, now right, it filters the amount of light, now it's way down here. But if I had too much light, that's what I would want to have happen. But instead, if I'm using the high side and I have it inside up here, then I read off of this H. So if it was 80, then I would align the 80 with the H. All right. So that is the use of the high slide. Again, with, in bright sunlight, you would need that. Uh, the only other thing that we need to accommodate for is that with the Bolex camera, if you're using a reflex camera where some of the light goes up to the eyepiece and it doesn't all hit the film, you need to accommodate for that. Uh, what you can do is, let's say, let's align this. If it was at 24 frames per second on 5.6, right, and I was shooting with a Bolex, a reflex viewfinder, I would open up on my lens, instead of putting it at 5.6, I would open up like a third of a stop, just a little bit open, about a third. So if you take the differences here between 4 and 5.6, just a third of that space, that's what I would open up a little more on the lens to accommodate for the light lost for the view system. Uh, now the only big issue with this light meter, or with all light meters, handheld light meters, uh, incident light meters, is how the position that you hold it in. You want to hold it directly where the uh, subject is. And to do that, we're going to head outside and take a light meter reading. We are now back outside, and we're on a very sunny day. We're still rating our ASA at 100. We have it set like that. <coughs> and when we do a rating, it's hard for you all to see, but the dial goes all the way up here. On this bright day, we're going to need the high slide. So, the high slide is gone. Oh, it's sock. Sock. <coughs> This is the, the good camera that the best students use. That's right. Because it is big, it's heavy. There you go. Made out of metal. It is? All right. Get where you're supposed oh, to be, sorry, Sock. Sorry. Sock is our subject, which and he is in front of the camera. When we hold the light meter, we are going to hold it right in front of him in the exact same light that he is in. And we are going to point it towards the camera. So if the camera on the ground, we would point it down. If the camera up high, we would point it up. But if the camera is even with him, we're going to hold it like that. So we press the button, and then because we have used the high slide, we're going to look off of the red H, and it is giving us just F22. It is really bright out here. This is true. So we could. I'm hot. Most of our lenses will go down to f22, but as you see, it's hot. Can we go inside now? It's hot. Yes, sock. You can go inside. Oh, good. Bye, everybody.